Hello and welcome to this clip going through the Chemistry Olympiad uh, 2019 paper, question 5. Um, it's quite an interesting question because it's uh, pertinent to what's in the news at that time. Uh, so the idea of trying to cut down on uh, plastic or single-use plastics all over the world to protect the marine environment um, is, a, is obviously a, a very hot topic at the moment. So before we go into the question, I just want to take you through a little bit about how to do a Chemistry Olympiad question. So because Chemistry Olympiad questions are quite applied and deductive, that makes them harder than normal A-level questions. So because they're written with A-level students in mind, the topic area should be accessible. So this particular topic area is to do with polymers and condensation polymers. So you can see, obviously, uh, addition, uh, condensation, neutralisation, reaction types and things like that. So every Chemistry Olympiad paper has its own periodic table attached and uh, it tends to be to a greater number of decimal places, so therefore a bit more precise than uh, the uh, periodic tables you might be used to uh, at A level. So therefore any calculations that you happen to do should use an appropriate number of significant, significant figures so you can use the least sensitive number of significant figures in the question and uh, then include the but relative atomic mass values that are provided with the paper. So when I do the calculations in the latter part of this question, I'll be using values that are from the actual periodic table that this paper came from. So you can easily download the Chemistry Olympiad um, 2019 paper from the RSC website uh, if you wanted to have a copy of the periodic table in front of you, the one that uh, I'm going to use. So normally what happens in a Chemistry Olympiad question is you'll be given some contextual information to link the chemistry you're going to be tested about to something that's going on in the news. So, like I mentioned a bit earlier, uh, the big sort of story in the environment at the moment, apart from obviously the climate emergency, is going to be uh, the uh, reduction in the use of, of single-use plastics. And a big part of that is obviously plastic straws. That's an example of something that we just use once, we throw it away, and it doesn't break down very easily in the environment. Uh, so, therefore, we have to find ways of perhaps making... Uh, plastic straws out of biodegradable plastics that do break down in the environment. So it's also important to notice that they've told you that no stereochemistry is required in the skeletal formulae. So that means you don't have to do uh, two optical isomers, for example, or an, an E or a Z isomer. Um, it's n they're not interested in that. They're testing out your ability to, to process things like the repeating unit and maybe some of the reactions of the, um, of the substance. So they're talking about uh, polylactic acid, and uh, they haven't given you the structure of lactic acid, but it tells you that the molecular formula is C3H6O3. So let's look at the information that we're given. We know that it's an acid, so we know it'll have a COOH group. We know it's an organic acid, and you can clearly deduce from the, the section of the, the polymer that there might be COOHs there. So looking a bit more closely at the linkages, you can see that they're polyester linkages as opposed to polyamide linkages. So they would have had to have come from an acid group and an alcohol or hydroxyl group reacting together. So this now allows us to uh, try to draw a, uh, either a skeletal or a uh, displayed formula. So I'm going to go for a displayed formula. So you end up with something like this, and if you look closely at the fact you've got methyl groups and uh, ester linkages alternating, you should have a, a, um, a methyl group coming off the end of the lactic acid structure. So the two circle functional groups react with an equivalent functional group in the next um, monomer along. So they don't react with each other, although they can do, but in this case, if you look at the structure of the polymer, it's a series of this molecule in a row and the COOH of one molecule reacts with the OH of the other molecule to form an ester linkage. So in the next part, part B, they want you to work out whether it's addition, condensation, neutralisation, oxidation or reduction. And what you've got to remember is, uh, like any condensation polymerization, the formation of a polyester in an ester linkage, for that matter, will involve the removal of water, so we call this a condensation reaction. So, just switching over to using a skeletal formula for, for lactic acid, 
Um, I mentioned a few minutes ago that lactic acid has two functional groups and they can actually react with each other on the same molecule as well as reacting with the other functional group on the next molecule. So this time they want you to construct another type of compound, uh, similar but not quite the same structure, but this time it's C6H8O4. So if the two functional groups react with each other instead of with the equivalent uh, opposite number on the next molecule along, then the carbon chain is forced to close up into a ring structure. So this matches C6H8O4. So this next section gives you some data and uh, you're to calculate the average molar mass of polymer chains in this sample of PLA. So the way that they do this is uh, they look at what's called n-group analysis, which is a procedure where reactive n-groups of the polymer are used to determine the polymer's molecular weight or what we, we might refer to it in A level as a uh, um, molar mass. So it tells you uh, the amount of PLA was dissolved in 25 centimetres cubed of benzyl alcohol. That just tells you the solvent. Then the mixture was titrated with uh, 0.0400 moles per decimeter to minus 3 of KOH solution. And the titer, you can assume the average titer, is 6.81 centimetres cubed. So because this is a titration, or a moles calculation essentially, we can use the data moles equation moles answer technique to simplify it somewhat. So what we do is we put in the data that we actually know. So we can clearly see that from the information we have, we can calculate the moles of uh, KOH that is used. So multiplying those two numbers together gives you 2.72 times 10 to the minus 4 moles. So we know that the mole ratio between a carboxylic acid group and an OH minus ion is 1 to 1, because a carboxylic acid group only has one acidic hydrogen that it can dissociate. So the way to think your way through this is to think about the number of PLA chains will be the same as the number of NCOH groups, because each polymer chain will have a COH group at one end and an OH at the other. So therefore, taking that as a given, the average molar mass of your PLA chain will be the mass of the PLA sample over the moles of the COOH. So that gives us 595 grams per mole to the minus 1 for three significant figures. So let's now go down to part E. So it tells you to calculate the average number of monomer units in each polymer chain of this sample. So for every monomer unit formed, you're going to have a water molecule that's produced, uh, because obviously it's a polyester that's made. So the original monomer uh, is going to be 90 grams per mole. So you subtract the water, and this leaves 72 grams per mole. So subtracting 18 from the original 595, because obviously there's a water molecule formed, every time a chain is formed, then that leaves us dividing that by 72, which is the remaining um, uh, monomers, each monomer minus the water as well, being uh, 72. That gives us eight repeat units per chain on average. The repeat units in polymers doesn't always necessarily mean one monomer. In this case, one monomer unit equals one repeat unit, because there's only one monomer present in the first place. So in this, uh, the next part of the question, it says 286,000 tonnes of PLA are manufactured each year. So it's worth remembering, if you're doing any mole calculations involving tonnes, it needs to be converted back to grams. So one tonne is 10 to the power of 6 grams, so it's a million grams. So that means that 286,000 tonnes <clears throat> equals 2.86 and 10 to 11 grams. Now it asks you to calculate the mass of sodium hydroxide needed to completely degrade all the PLA manufactured in one year to sodium lactate. And assume the PLA is pure and ignore the contribution from any end groups. So if you remember on our titration calculation, we worked out that there's only one carboxylic acid group per lactic acid molecule. So therefore, the OH to COOH mole ratio is going to be 1 to 1. So therefore, the mole ratio of sodium hydroxide to C3H6O3 is going to be 1 to 1 as well. So to get the mass of sodium hydroxide required, you multiply the mass of PLA that you've got 
times the molar mass of NaOH, and then you divide that by the MR of lactic acid minus the water that uh, is lost. So if we type those numbers into our calculator, that gives us 1.59 times 10 to the power of 11 grams, or 159,000 tonnes, both answers to three sig figs. So part G talks about um, how PLA can be broken down by enzyme degradation. Uh, so as you probably guess, it can be broken down by hydrolysis naturally in the soil, so it's biodegradable. Um, but if it comes into contact with enzymes, this process can be speeded up a little bit. So let's say we have an enzyme that degrades it to a mixture of the lactic acid monomer and a compound B. And it says a dimer of lactic acid. We'll come back to what a dimer is a little bit later. It says commercial plastics usually contain other compounds in addition to PLA, and you can assume that these other compounds are, are unreactive, so they don't uh, interfere with the reaction we're talking about. So our plastic is degraded, resulting in a sample of mass 1.044 grams. So let's just collect the information as we go and process it. So what that means really is that the sample, some of which will be PLA, is 1.044 grams. So you assume that only the PLA part reacts. So they want to us, us to calculate the amount of acid in the sample. So we need to think carefully about our data that we're given. So we know that we've got 1.044 grams of an impure sample um, of PLA. So that doesn't really help us much in working out the number of moles of PLA. But we do know uh, that uh, you've got 0.0194 decimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide and it's at a, at a 0 0.100 mole per decimeter to the minus 3 uh, concentration. So if we do n equals v times c, we can get the number of moles of sodium hydroxide. It allows us to use the equation to work out the number of moles of COOH in our acid. So the sample that was titrated was 20 centimeters cubed and the stock solution made up from our impure sample of PLA was 100 centimetres cubed. So all you need to do is multiply the number of moles of COOH by 5. So that gives us 9.7 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of acid. Let's now think about the next part. So let's first of all go to part H and just re- uh, we visit what a dimer is. So a dimer formed when two molecules of the same substance react together. So they want us to, uh, to work out the structure of compound B. Now it's not likely to be a cyclic structure. Um, so if we had two halves of the dimer and put it together, you'd use two lactic acid molecules like that to form a sort of straight chain kind of uh, uh, structure like the one you've got here. I put a little dotted line in just to show the sort of demarcation line between one lactic acid and the next lactic acid. So the next part is part H. I need to clear some space for this one because it's another calculation. So this next part's a little bit more complicated. You've got uh, 20 centimetres cubed of our original PLA stock solution mixed with 40 centimetres cubed of sodium hydroxide with a concentration of 0.1 mole per decimeter cubed. So the first thing to do is to extract from that how many moles of sodium hydroxide we start with. So that's 4 times 10 to the minus 3. But we have to take into account the HCl that is uh, titrated with the NaOH. So we're trying to find the remaining amount of NaOH after that's happened. So the reaction between those is a one-to-one -one mole ratio. So therefore, the remaining moles of sodium hydroxide is the original moles minus the moles of HCl that was titrated with it. So that gives us 2.15 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of sodium hydroxide left. Now this is for only 20 centimetres cubed of stock solution. What about the remainder? We have to scale it up as if the whole lot had been titrated with sodium hydroxide. So therefore we take the fact that the 20 centimetres cubed came from a 100 centimetres cubed stock solution that was made up originally. So that means that the number of moles of NaOH that would have reacted with the whole stock solution must be 5 times 2.15 times 10 to the minus 3 equals 1.075 times 10 to the minus 2 moles. 
So this will be equal to the amount of the PLA repeat unit in moles as well. So to work out the amount of the dimer, it's the amount of the repeat unit take away the amount of acid from part G. So in part G, you calculated the amount of acid in the original stock solution. So take the acid away from that, and then that gives you the amount of the dimer left. Because if you remember, the dimer structure doesn't have a uh, carboxylic acid. So the MR of the dimer is 162 grams per mole. So first we calculate the number of moles of the dimer, which is 1.05 times 10 to the minus 3. So that allows us to get the mass of the dimer. So to work out the number of moles of monomer, you take your repeating unit and you multiply that by 2 times the number of moles of the dimer. And the reason for that is 2 moles of the dimer per repeat unit are formed. So if you remember the structure of the dimer, it's got two C double bond O groups. That means that two COH are needed from the original PLA. So doing the calculation, so the monomer uh, is going to have 8.65 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. And that will be the same as the number of moles of lactic acid, which has a molar mass of 90 grams. So we can work out the mass of the lactic acid. So that's a simple case of taking the molar mass times the number of moles, and that gives us 0 0.7785 grams. Okay, so thanks for listening, and until next time, see you soon.